Hey everybody, welcome to Avid Max Tying Tuesdays. Today we're going to show you how to tie the good old serendipity. Starts with the Daiichi 1130 hook. This is a great curved hook with a down eye. Then we're going to use uh, some uni floss for the main body of our fly, followed by some bleached elk hair for the wing butts. And then the thread I'm using today is a 6 aught. So we're going to start our thread right on the hook shank as we usually do, just behind the hook eye with some locking wraps until we can go in and clip out our thread. And right from there, I'm going to tie in our first material. So this is going to be that uni floss. And we're going to tie it in right at the front section here. And then make sure it's secure. And then we'll work our way back down the body. You want to keep a nice smooth body, just like you would if you were doing a Copper John or any other fly that you're going to end up doing a wrapped material for the main body and you want to keep a nice clean transition here. So we'll work back just past where that hook point or where the hook barb is down the bend and then walk our thread right back on up all the way to where that hook eye is and then I'm going to just half hitch it there and we can start to wrap that uni floss to where our thread is. And I like to spin the uni floss. I want this to be a nice rope material. Uni floss is a lot of different, uh, it's made up of a bunch of small fibers. And so I'm just going to spin this counterclockwise to make sure that it's not nice and knotted and rope-like. We want some segmentation out of this material. So we're just going to work that on up all the way, like I said, to where that thread is, trying to avoid our hook point here as we go. It's a sweet little fly. It's been around for a while. There's lots of variations of it. We're doing a brown variation today. It's uh, tied in red very commonly. It's also done in reds and other colors. If you've ever heard of the $3 dip, it's a variation of this original serendipity pattern. We're just going to make sure we go pretty much to the eye. I'm just going to leave myself a little bit of room there. Now I'm going to come with my thread, capture this off. And I'm going to work right up on top of it just slightly and make myself somewhat of a thread head base there. And then we can trim out our excess material and prepare to tie in the elk hair. Pretty simple pattern. Takes a little bit of practice just to get the elk hair right, but once you do, it's quick and easy. You can whip a bunch out and have a really effective midge merger, midge pupa fly. So when you're tying this fly, a little trick that I find helps a little bit is if you kind of take your hook and position it so that your hook eye is positioned upward a little bit, just so that everything's not sliding off the front as you go to tie in this elk hair. But I'm gonna grab a small hank, do just about the width of the bar or of the gape there, the hook gape. Helps you keep it consistent as you're tying a bunch of these. And then I'm gonna trim that elk hair flat flush all the way across and then I'm going to measure just right about to where that hook eye ends so kind of flush with the hook I want my thread just a little bit further forward and we're going to capture that a couple of quick loose wraps before we pull it on down and make sure it's nice and snug there and kind of pull everything up bite through the hair once or twice to make sure that's not going to move around too much on us and then I always just sneak right in front and give it a couple of quick whip finishes in there. Right behind that hook eye, trying not to capture any hair. And come and clip out our thread. And 
and then we can trim our elk here. So that head that I have kind of built up from what I trimmed is about where I want it. So now I'm just going to come in on the back end and trim these long fibers short. So to do that, I kind of use the bend in the shank of the hook here to line up my scissors and then just do a nice clean, quick cut on them. You can always come back and trim and clean up a little bit if you'd like, but that's a pretty good looking elk hair wing bud. You can play around with different sizes of it also if you want a real thick wing bud and you want it to be closer to the surface, maybe even a, a dry where it's just below the water film. You can do that. You can do it a little bit more sparsely tied as well, um, just depending on the activity of the bugs and sort of what stage they're in there. So i trim this just a little bit. There you are, there is a completed good old serendipity. If you enjoyed the video today, make sure to give us a thumbs up and share it with your friends. If you have any suggestions on what you'd like to see us tie in the future, please drop us a comment in the lines below. For more fly fishing and outdoor related videos, be sure to subscribe to the Avid Max YouTube channel. Thanks for watching and we'll see you out there.